Warning, the site you are currently browsing uses cookies to track your movements. You've heard of these things, right? Cookies? Not the tasty kind, the computer kind. Ever wondered what they are? We hear they can track us around the internet. We see the European Union pass legislation to control them. We see our antivirus software give us warnings about them. They sound pretty scary. Who snuck these things on my computer? No one did. Those cookies are on your computer for the same reason there's a web browser on your computer. Because it's a vital part of how you use the web. Why? Let me tell you all about it. Actually, first I have to check my email. I'm, I'm waiting for something important to come in. Hey, Goodmail. Hello, and welcome to Goodmail. This is Goodmail, my webmail service. Hey, Goodmail, any new mail for me? What is your username and password, please? Oh, right, it's Pija, and password, uh, living la vida loca. Welcome to Goodmail. You have no new messages. All right, I'll check back later then. You know, webmail's a funny thing. Email as we know it dates back to 1971, when Ray Tomlinson altered a program used for sending messages between users on the same computer to be able to send messages to other computers through the ARPANET, the predecessor to the internet. That means that email predates the internet as we know it. And the internet is a good deal older than the World Wide Web. These days we often hear the terms internet and web used interchangeably, but they're not the same thing. The internet is the network that connects all the computers together. The web is made up of all the web pages that you can look at with your browser. The web is part of the internet, but it's just one thing the internet is used for. Email is another. In 1984, a contractor at CERN in Switzerland, that's the research laboratory that now holds the Large Hadron Collider, realized that physicists from all over the world had all sorts of information to share, new ideas and papers, but they had no good fast way to discover this information and to get papers from one research laboratory to another. That contractor's name was Tim Berners-Lee. He solved the problem and he called his solution the World Wide Web. The idea was this. What if we could link all those documents together into a web of information? What if when you were reading one paper and you came to a reference to another paper, you could follow a hyperlink and get that paper immediately? This is what we call hypertext. And while it had been done before, it had never been done as a big open network. But that's exactly what Tim Berners-Lee did. He invented a protocol, that's a language that computers use to talk to each other, called HTTP, Hypertext Transfer protocol. You know those letters. They're the letters that come in front of the colon slash slash in every web address. When you click on a link on a web page, there's some URL that it points to. Looks something like this. That URL just means use HTTP to ask info.cern.ch for hypertext slash history.html. So from the very beginning, HTTP and the web were about getting documents from servers, sometimes several servers because a web page over at CERN might link to a web page over at MIT. Now a connection between two computers on the internet is often like a phone call. You find someone's number, you call them up, and now you're talking back and forth. You have a conversation until you're done, then you hang up. But this can't be how the web works because each link you click might point to CERN or might point to MIT. Each page can be on a different server, so every time you load a new page, you need to make a new connection. Your browser, opens a connection to the server, sends a request for the page you're after, lets the server send a response with the page, and then closes the connection. While you're reading the page, you're not actively connected to anything. But then, when you click on a link to go to a new page, your browser opens a new connection and requests that page. Oh, speaking of getting new things, that reminds me. Hey, Goodmail. Hello, and welcome to Goodmail. Hey, it's me again. Any new mail? What is your username and password, please? Goodmail. Buddy, it's me. I just logged in like two minutes ago. What is your username and password, please? Right. So, here's the thing about HTTP. Like I said, every time you request a new page, you have to make a new connection. That means that the server can't remember who you are from request to request, because servers don't have caller ID. Originally, there wasn't supposed to be a need to remember who the user was. Remember, HTTP and the web were designed for getting research papers. It doesn't matter who you are or how many times you've asked me for the paper, I'm just gonna send you the same paper. The paper is the paper is the paper. And there are still plenty of web pages today, like blog posts, where the content of the page is exactly the same, no matter who you are. But then, there's Goodmail. Hello, and welcome to Goodmail. Yeah, him. You see, the physics paper is the same for everyone, but my email inbox, that's just for me. No one else gets to read my email. And to protect it, Goodmail makes me enter- Hello, and welcome to Goodmail. Yes, hello, thank you. Goodmail makes me enter my password, and then in response, it can send me 
my email because it knows that it's me. But the next time I ask him for my email, even a moment later, he doesn't know it's me. I need to send my password again. Well, in 1994, Netscape, remember Netscape? They realized this was a problem. See, they wanted to implement a shopping cart on a website. Now, it's hard to imagine now, but in 1994, an online shopping cart had never been done before. To make it work, they had to keep track of who had what in their cart. And in order to do that, they had to keep track of which user was which. And that is when they created what we still know today as cookies. The word cookie is actually short for magic cookie, which is not a baked good developed in the 60s. So you know when you're talking to someone and you're in the middle of a whole thing and they suddenly go, oh my god, I have this amazing story I have to tell you, I just remembered, but no, finish what you're saying and I'll tell you afterwards, except I'm gonna forget, so tell me the word banana and then I'll remember because otherwise I'm gonna forget the story again and you need to hear this story, but keep going. And then you try really hard to finish your point while wondering what the heck your friend has to tell you about bananas that's so important. The word banana here is actually a magic cookie. It's a piece of data that someone else gives you that doesn't really mean anything to you. Your job is to give it back to that person later. Which means that when Good Mail tells Hello. you- Hello, welcome to Good Mail. Uh, yes. Now enhanced with cookies. Oh. In that case, I'd, I'd like to log in. What is your username and password, It was uh, Pija and live in La Vida Loca. Welcome to Goodmail. You have no new messages. Have a cookie. Right, well, uh, thank you very much. As I was saying, when I give my password to Goodmail, it can now give me a cookie. And because my browser supports cookies, I'll show this to Goodmail every time I check my email. Welcome to, oh, Mr. Jaros. Welcome back. You have one. New message. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. So the big question, can cookies track you around the internet? Well, yes, but not in the way you're worried about. They don't inform the NSA of every site you've been to. In fact, if I went to nsa.gov, they wouldn't see this cookie because only good mail gets to see this cookie. Now a cookie does let a website track you around that website. And that's a really good thing because without that we couldn't have shopping carts or social media sites or anything you log into. We depend on cookies because without them, we wouldn't have the web we know and love today. Anyhow, I evidently have some business to attend to, so I'll catch you next time. Dear Mr. Jaros, I am the financial controller of Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation.